Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how you can turn your wide angle action camera footage into footage you can view on a 360 viewer such as the one that's built into YouTube or a virtual reality headset. I'm going to be using Adobe Premiere Pro because it has all the features I need built in. However, each step could be achieved using standalone freeware software. However, as Adobe has everything I need in one place, I'm going to be using that. But the steps would be the same for freeware software. So to start, just import the video that you're going to use. Now the video that I'm using is one I shot whilst I was on holiday. It was never intended for use in this way. So I just shot a spinning shot by hand in 4K using my camera. I've tried it in VR, it looks quite good. So I'm gonna use this as my example. Now this was shot on a Sony action camera, which in this mode had a horizontal field of view of 170 degrees and a vertical field of view of approximately 100 degrees. Now that's important because in order to trick the various 360 softwares into thinking that we have a full 360 video, we need to add an appropriate amount of black space around it before we make the distortion changes to correct the image. In order to calculate the black space, I just used some extremely simple calculations. So this is the video size in pixels. This is the field of view related to those dimensions. Those are the two numbers divided by each other. And because I'm producing a 360 degree video, these are the numbers I will need to use in the end. Now to start with, I'm going to resize the frame to be a square frame based on the largest number, which here is 8132. So we change the sequence to 8000. 132 by 8132. Now at the bottom here there is an option for VR. We don't need that yet, so just leave that blank. It'll ask to re-render. Now let's chuck this in the middle. So now that this is there, you would do your editing. As I said, I'm just going to leave it as it is, but you could add extra videos off the end. But once you've edited your video, the first step is to export it. Now this step could be potentially skipped with a very little change from Adobe to uh, one of their distortion filters, but as it stands right now, you need to export this. If you want to keep all the original resolution, you're going to need to use a codec which can actually handle it. Now H.264 and even H.265 can't, however the QuickTime ones can. So you would switch to GoPro Cineform, match the source values, and there you are. Now this will take forever to render. Even this 40 second clip with these settings will take my fairly powerful computer about half an hour. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to do it quicker. I'm going to leave it in H.264. However, I will increase resolution to the maximum that it can handle, which is 3000 and something. 3050 by 3050, that'll do. And again, down here, there's a setting for VR. We don't need that yet. So just render it as it is. Once rendered, go and find the newly rendered file, drag it in to your project. Now obviously it shrunk it down because I rendered it at a smaller size, which is fine. I'm okay with losing a bit of resolution, but obviously you're gonna to want to keep that resolution if you can. So I'm just going to resize this video under here, which I believe is 260, should bring me, not quite, 265, close enough, it'll do for these purposes. You want it to be the same size as the original, but keep this. Now you're going to want to resize your frame so the actual dimensions it's going to be in the end. So in this case, we need to redo it to 3,888. 3,888. Now we need the VR properties. Equi equirectangular, monoscopic, 360 degrees and 180 degree vertical. If you were doing a 180 degree video, you would change the settings here. But for now, this is what we need. It's okay, it'll re-render. Now the reason we had to do the re-rendering before is because the lens distortion setting on Adobe, when used on the original footage, 
cuts off the edges to keep it the same original frame size, which is no good for us. We want to keep all of the video as much as we can. However, once we've rescaled the footage, we can now distort it to create a, an image which keeps as much resolution as possible. So you want to drag this to try to make things nice and straight. You're never going to get it to be perfect. That's just the nature of the way that this system works. However, you'll get it pretty close. Now, as you can see, it stretched it to fill up basically the entire of the resized frame, which is too large. So we're actually going to have to scale it back down again, which is why we keep the original as a reference. So we need to actually scale this back down so that it just touches the outside. Because that then accounts for a 170 degree wide field of view. We've lost a little bit in the vertical, but again, this is the best we can do with the current situation. Someone smarter than I could probably make a standalone tool which uses the same concept in order to completely undistort the image in the most appropriate way, but this works for now. Now, in order to view this on Adobe, you have this ability to to view like it was in a headset, which lets you give have an idea of what you're looking at. Now, I'm going to be watching this in my Vive, so I'm going to change it to the same horizontal and vertical settings which will be in my Vive, and that lets me see what it will look roughly in there. So I can adjust my distortion as needs be if I want to try to straighten out just a little bit more around the edges. That's probably about as far as it's going to go for this particular footage. And we start a gentle pan, and if you look, it's pretty much undistorted right up to the very edge in the middle, and at the top and bottom, it's pretty good. It's not perfect, but these aren't designed for filming in 360, so it's doing very well. And that's pretty much it. Now that you've got your stretched out video, you export the media. In the highest resolution you can be bothered to and now you do click VR video and in this case monoscopic. I'm going to do an H264 again. Actually let's go 265. Let's keep as much resolution as possible. However bear in mind that YouTube can't handle H.265. So you might want to export it in another format, a lossless format such as QuickTime. So actually, I'm just going to stick with this. That's as much resolution as I can possibly squeeze out of it. Now, another thing is viewing in VR, you're going to want to have a higher frame rate if possible. Now, you can either let your software and hardware package that's rendering the image, try to up the frame rate, or you can bump it up now. I'm going to bump it up to 60, letting my computer do the grunt work now so that the final video is actually a 60 frame per second video. It's not going to be true 60 frames per second, but it'll certainly be close enough for my purposes. So now we just export. Once it's exported, you chuck it up onto YouTube. And it should include some data, there we are, that tells it that it's a 360 video. Once it's uploaded, it'll take some time to process before it'll actually be viewable in 360. If you're going to be viewing it in the desktop HMD, you can obviously just take the video straight to your computer that's going to be using it. And if you watch it using either the Vive video player from HTC or I use virtual desktop. The setting that you need is just a flat 360 video and then all the corrections and distortions we've just done means that it should come out nice and flat 
for the most part, meaning that you can now view your footage that you shot on a wide angle action camera in a 360 video player. Once it's uploaded and processed, you will have 360 degree panable video made from your action camera footage with corrected distortion, at least as best as can be done with the current software. Now, as I said, someone much smarter than I would be able to easily make a standalone piece of software which does all of this in a couple of steps. However, they would have to be smarter than I. <laughs> it works quite well, I think. Even on these spinning shots, you can pan and track. Obviously, at the very edges, you lose resolution, but in the middle, where the focus is, it's all nice and sharp still. <laughs> 